How you spend your time matters. There are so many precious things around us, but we tend to forget that time is equally as valuable as every other thing that you can see and touch. No one can recover any time they lose while distracted and focusing or chasing things that just don't matter. That's why you have to be cautious when dealing with time. Moses knew how important time is and how he spends it. That's why he asked God to teach him something that only God can teach most excellently. In Psalm 90, verse 10, we see the prayer of Moses, and he says, Our days may come to seventy years or eighty, if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Now in the scripture above, we see that Moses had this consciousness in him of the time that man has on the earth. Now at some point, we will be cut off from this life. That made him ask the Lord to teach him how to spend his days wisely. In Psalm 90, verse 12, he says, Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Now, this prayer came from a place of revelation of what God can do for his children. This prayer ought to be your prayer as well today in every waking moment. It's a prayer that asks God to teach you how to use your days and the times in these days to become productive. Now, the beauty of God is that you will not be just productive physically, but also spiritually. He wants you to have wholesome productivity. A man can teach you about time management. Most times it focuses on improving yourself based on the things that you can see. But what about the things you can't see? The spiritual matter. Nobody can teach you about spiritual productivity except God. You see, spiritual productivity and growth are also a result of days that you number and apply wisdom. When you spend all your days engaging in activities that are not propagating your improvement and progress in life, in no time you'll find that you're regressing you'll fall lower and lower from the standard that you had attained. This fact is also applicable in your spiritual life. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, it says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. As you read further into the chapter, there's a clear highlight of every event of life. This outline helps us to see that there is time for everything in life. You cannot expect to reap when it is time to sow. You have to do the right thing at the right time, in the right way, and at the right place. God teaches you to do this so that you don't miss any crucial process in life and consequently end up with the results you didn't desire. There's a reason why the Holy Spirit inspired Moses to write this prayer down for us to read and receive the revelation therein. When you don't number your days, you'll be caught unaware with times and seasons with a snap of a finger. You'll live life like a hamster on a hamster wheel. You'll just be moving, but not heading anywhere or making any tangible progress forward. You see, the Bible has something deeply profound that keeps me alert each day and inspires me to number the days and apply wisdom. We all know that our Lord will come back to take His church. And even so, the day of the Lord is a great mystery. Mark 13 verses 32 through 33 says, But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. Now, no one knows which day it will be or what particular hour the Lord will return. All over the world, there are so many Bible scholars and ministers of the gospel that try to predict the year in which the Lord will come back. Some did a long time ago, but got it wrong because we're still here, right? All these people trying to calculate the year, but it's nearly impossible to calculate the day and the hour. That is a mystery that God reserves for himself. And that day will creep up on us because the Bible records that it will come like a thief. And when you read further down in the book of Mark, chapter 13, verses 33 through 37, the Bible compares the Son of God as a master who went on a journey, and his return is unknown. Now, he left instructions to his servants on what each of them should do. The servants are urged to keep watch, lest the master come back and find them asleep. In the same way, you are supposed to watch and pray because you don't know the time. When the Bible tells us to keep watch, it doesn't mean that you avoid sleeping and spend every moment praying until the day of the Lord. What he means is that you should number your days and apply wisdom unto them. God wants you to be spiritually and physically alert at all times. He wants you to spend your days and nights in ways that are right and wise. God wants you to have a plan of how you will use your time so that you don't end up being spiritually asleep. So how you spend your time matters because it will determine the quality of your life all around. Where you are in life right now is a result of how you spend your time. 
you can go ahead and do a quick check of your life and then imagine where you would be if you had an excellent plan for all your days. Imagine where you'd be today if you had a clear and concise plan that you stick to each day. A plan that caters to your physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, and career needs. I bet you would be further than where you are right now. Now, there's always a better place to be in life, regardless of how amazing your life is and feels. And it's only by God that we can achieve a life that is at a perfect balance. Now, many people don't know this secret. This is why they do exceptionally well in one area, yet they're failing terribly in other areas of their lives. This experience is what leaves many people depressed and frustrated. They've not allowed God to teach them to number the days. You know the times that we're living in are terrible. We're living in perilous times the way the Word of God puts it. People are sinking deeper and deeper into sin until you think we're back to Sodom and Gomorrah times. There are despicable crimes and demands all around the world. And what makes the whole thing extremely sad is that people don't consider what God wants. The state of the world makes it very easy for people to live their lives as unwise. But for you, there's someone who will not let you do that because he always will convict you of sin. There is something so profound in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15-16. through 16. It says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. You see, it's only the wise that know how to redeem the time. They are the ones that know how to get the most out of the time that they have in these evil days. When you're conscious of this, you'll not spend your time chasing after vain things. You won't struggle to create time for senseless pleasures of the world. Neither will you chase after the things that symbolize success according to the standards of the world. When you live as the wise, you will seek first the kingdom of heaven. Everything about your days will always push you towards the things of God. Even if you have an 8-5 to five work schedule, you will carry out the will of God even at work. It will not be an excuse to derail yourself from the will of God. Now, when God teaches you to number your days, regardless of the kind of daily schedule you have, He will make it work to your advantage. When you consciously choose to live as the wise and not as a fool, you will find many ways to redeem the time. This way, you'll act on the word of God that says, keep watch and pray. When the master comes back, he'll not find you sleeping or falling away from the faith. God is the author of time. He knows your beginning, your end, and everything in between. So when he teaches you how to spend your days, his will and purpose for your life will come together beautifully. When you stay on course, he knows when the fullness of time comes so that he can make everything perfect. He's also gracious enough to make you aware that the fullness of time has come for a particular level you're at in that moment. You can trust God with your time. He will guide you on what to put your time and energy in, as well as what not to invest your time in. You see, it's because he knows whether or not it will benefit you. Don't ruin your future by spending your time on things that take away from your character, your values, your progress, and your spirituality. They're too precious in this wicked world. Every day, take time out to plan for your day so that you don't stumble upon activities for the day. You may not like your progress at the end of the day. Be intentional with your time and be the wise person God says you are in these evil days. God has put His wisdom in you and the capacity to apply it excellently. Let nothing and no one waste your time, including yourself, because we have but little time on this earth. Make every second count. You are under the guidance of the author of time. You will never lose time with him. Keep watch and pray so that the day of the Lord will find you ready and not asleep. Number your days and apply wisdom.